question on county trial court is now in session. The Honorable Patrick J. Conlon, Jr. presiding. Good afternoon. People versus Jeremy Shue, 18855 FH and 19378 FH. Jessica Blanche, Paragon, we have people. For the record, Your Honor, Stuart Collis, um, Jeremy. Your Honor, may we approach the bench? Sure. Back on the record. All right. Um, so the record should reflect a bench conference with uh, the prosecutor, defense counsel, as well as probation. Um, <clears throat> it's it's clear to me, Mr. Shu, that uh, or at least Mr. Collis has reported that there really is a breakdown in communication between the two of you. Um, yes, so at this point, um, I don't entertain oral motions for attorneys to withdraw. So I'm going to adjourn this to allow Mr. Collis to file a motion to withdraw. And then at that time, once we have done, once we have that, I'll sign that and you are free to hire another lawyer. You're free to represent yourself. There are some, there are some tricky bits about that. So we'll have to go over some of that with you. Um, and, and at that time, we'll take up the next step. Um, I understand just from Agent Benetti that there's something to do with medical records that I kind of stopped her because I don't really know exactly what's going on there, but we're not going to do anything further with your case in front of me or any of your other cases until we get Mr. Collis's motion. So I Your think, Honor. Mr. Collis, how long do you think it's going to take you to file that motion? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I think it'll take at least a couple of weeks before I can draft and get the motion out. Uh, so probably a month, I would say, Your Honor, to, for a hearing date. What? So I'm going to do this. I'll set a hearing a month from now. If you get okay. the motion filed before that, I'll hear it before that. I mean, whatever Wednesday is available. Okay. Certainly. Your Honor, right. ask you, what? Um, I just wanted to say I, I have a follow up appointment with neurology and neurosurgery that the Washington County Jail cannot accommodate. Um, I've been in jail since the 11th on a probation violation stemming from failure to accommodate. I would ask that I be given uh, either a tether or a PR bond pursuant to MCR 6.445C. If Mr. Collis is gonna take a month, um, I, I, in my, my opinion, I've done nothing wrong. December 7th. Um, I know that you've been waiting there for some time, Mr. Shu. I'm, I'm well aware of that, um, but we have done some work to try to move things around for you. And it hasn't been successful, so we're gonna we're gonna resolve this. We're gonna get it all taken care of. If you represent yourself, I'm gonna let you do that. If you hire someone else, I'm gonna let you do that. But we got to get this done properly because there's been too much kind of you know claims of mistreatment, and so I, this is now kind of puts me in the position of doing this all kind of on the record and how we're gonna do this. Um, kind of a, you know, transparently. So I, I completely um, understand. I'm going to adjourn question. this to November 30th at 1.30. Mr. Collis, you don't need to wait till November 30th. If you get the motion done and want to schedule it ahead of time, go ahead and do that. I think I'm here every Wednesday in November. So you can do that. So just get that done as soon as possible. But um, I do believe, Mr. Shu, that the jail can accommodate any of your have, necessary have, medical appointments? I have the medical records with me and they haven't, I, the medical records have been, um, I have been scheduled for a follow-up neuro, neuro, uh, neurology or neurosurgery since April. I have yet to see them. I asked that I be given, I've been given COVID twice in the Washtenaw County Jail due to improper classification of people that is improperly screened. Um, I asked that I be given a tether I'll, I'll submit to a tether. I'll submit to whatever the court stipulations are. I'm clearly not a flight risk. I, I didn't run from treatment. Your Honor, you, you, you stated to me on the 3rd of October, sir, that if, any, if there was any complications or anything dealing with treatment to let you know as soon as possible, I didn't leave the hospital. I went to the hospital for a seizure. I did not leave. I am not a flight risk. I'll submit to tether. I'll submit to whatever requirements that the, the court holds. I just ask that I be allowed to do the medical stuff and deal with this. I have, I can, I can show you the records. I asked Ms. Benetti to come up and get them. She refused to come get them. I, well, that's I, not her job. She's not in charge of coming to get your records, sir. So okay. that, I mean, she wouldn't do that. And, the, and want, this is, you know, I mean, I can send them to so, the court. 
I can bring them to okay. the court if you're willing. If you're willing to give me a tether, I'm not. So, sir, the you. problem is this, and I got to tell you that the concern I have, and the reason I'm not going to do that, is we had a long conversation about your willingness to go into into some sort of treatment and tricap, and then that literally went sideways. And so I'm not going to have another situation where you convince me of your willingness to cooperate. And at the I literal first moment that that happens, all, excuse my language, all hell broke loose that day. No, sir. And I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but I was getting a ton of reports about it. Can and I, we're not going to have that, Mr. Shu. I'm I, so I, sorry. Can I respond, sir, please? Briefly, but... Okay, all I all I say, sir, is I was I was literally wheeled out to the van in a wheelchair. I got into the van. I got up there. I asked I asked for a wheelchair or a walker as I am accommodated. I am currently in a wheelchair in Washington County Jail. I asked for a wheelchair or a walker. I was refused that. I went to the hospital by ambulance. At the hospital, I was I was. Washington County came and got me after four hours of being in a hospital in a in a, in a uh, wheelchair equipped van, in a ramp equipped van in a wheelchair. I I simply I this is a failure to accommodate clearly. Uh, you at your honor, you asked not me for me not to make it any worse than it was. You said specifically on record on October third, don't let the melee happen. I did not do that. I did not leave the hospital. I did not leave the van. I did not run away. I am not. I am trying to do everything I can do. I called Miss Vanetti from the hospital. I did everything I can. I have. I have seizures. I have left side paralysis. I have twenty percent strength in my left side, sir. That's all I'm asking. I literally did everything I was supposed to do. That's all. That's all, right. all I'm well, saying. We're gonna, we're gonna get that. it sorted out, Mr. Shu. So just mine. We'll get it sorted out, Mr. Collis. Get your motion filed as soon as possible. But I've scheduled it now for the thirtieth. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. For 34 and 35, People versus Kevin LaCroix, 21545FH and 21546FH. Jessica Blanche Pam, on behalf of People. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sam Bernstein with and on behalf of Mr. LaCroix. Sir, can you please state your name for the court? Kevin LaCroix. Okay, today is the date and time set for pre trial in these matters. Counsel, what are we doing today? Your Honor, I don't believe that there's going to be. A resolution in this case. We're asking the court to please set this for a final pretrial and trial date. All right, so we're going to do final pretrial on this January 11th at 1 30 p.m. and jury trial will be February 13th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd like to say something, please. Okay, go ahead. Um, the, it's nothing, there's nothing incriminating in what I'm about to say. I'm simply stating it. For the record, I deserve to be heard, and uh, I, I'm trying to preserve it in, in case of appeal, sir. Uh, the okay. truth matters. Your Honor, after speaking with my current attorney, I believe that my former attorney in the public defender's office, Mr. Torsio Feaster, is conspiring and colluding with the assistant prosecuting attorney, Ms. Jessica Blanche, to attempt to perpetrate Brady violations and due process violations by withholding from the defense impeaching and exculpatory audio, video, and textual evidence in their possession. In a deliberate attempt to prejudice this honorable court and generate a false narrative regarding telephonic conversations about selling legal marijuana, Ms. Blanche accidentally disclosed that she had listened to those conversations. Said conversations that the defense still doesn't have all of all of, despite numerous requests, said conversations that directly contradict and impeach the alleged victim's preliminary exam testimony. Quote, in general, the principles announced in Brady v. Maryland do not apply to a tardy disclosure of exculpatory information, but to a complete failure to disclose. If previously undisclosed evidence is disclosed, during, Brady, during trial, no Brady violation incurs unless the defendant has been prejudiced by the delay in disclosure. That's from United States v. Word and Robertson. I have been prejudiced not once but twice 
by the delay in disclosure. First at my preliminary exam, where if my attorney had possessed the impeaching evidence, he could have made a qualified argument not to bind over based on the impeachment. While Ms. Blanche wasn't involved then, she certainly was involved when she withheld the impeaching evidence during my motion to quash, where it would have played a key role in had my attorney been aware of it, which he was not. To protect the government against any further appearance of prosecutorial misconduct and impropriety, and prior to the defense filing of a motion to dismiss based upon said demonstratedly impeached testimony, the defense hereby requests that the assistant prosecuting attorney, Ms. Jessica Blanche, immediately recuse herself from this case. I also ask that the court demand that all alleged evidence in this case be promptly turned over to the defense attorney of record, Mr. Sam Bernstein, in adherence to Michigan Court Rule 6.201. Thank you, Your Honor, for hearing me out. Sure. Well, I'll bite for a second. I guess my question is, do you believe that there is exculpatory evidence that currently the prosecutor has not turned over to Mr. Bernstein? Absolutely, Your Honor. Okay. So clearly, if that were the case, <clears throat> that would be a Brady violation. But and, and Ms. Blanche is a veteran enough prosecutor to know that. So I don't, I mean, I, you know, certainly you've made your record. So that's all well and good. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but I just want to point out to you that I don't know, you know, if Ms. Blanche is asserting that she's turned over everything, then there's no grounds for her to recuse herself. If that were to be determined later, you would have certainly grounds to, you know, set aside your conviction if that happens. You aren't convicted yet either. So that's not, that's kind of out there. <clears throat> but the other piece of this is that, um, you know, I mean, if in, I, I mean, I certainly don't condone any sort of collusion between Mr. Feaster and Ms. Blanche. That that would not be my experience, and I, I, I can't. I mean, you've made your record, but I can't imagine that at any scenario where that would have happened. But I do want to just say that, you know, if, if in fact there's evidence out there, I'm confident that Ms. Blanche is going to surrender that to Mr. Bernstein. I don't think that there's any, any collusion or any intent there. And so if that's the case, if it's, if it's exculpatory evidence, Mr. Bernstein is not precluded from filing another motion to suppress. I mean, we've got trial dates now. But we don't, you know, un unlike the civil arena where you can't just keep filing the same motion in a criminal arena, when new stuff comes to light, you kind of can file the same motion. So if that's the case, Mr. LaCroix, then he'll file that. OK, understood, Your Honor. Thank you. OK. All right. Number 53, People versus Derek Smith, 21105 FC. Jessica Blanche, Perry, we have people. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sam Bernstein with on behalf of Mr. Smith. Your Honor, could we could we approach real quick? It's not completely about Mr. Smith, but can we approach real quick? Sure. Back on the record. All right. Um, today's the date and time set for final pretrial in this matter. Um, record should reflect a, a bench conference with attorneys in this matter, just so that you're hearing it from me, Mr. Smith. Um, I know Mr. Bernstein is going to talk to you. But the jury instructions, voir dire, all the work that's getting ready for the trial is due tomorrow at four o'clock. Um, exhibits have to be exchanged on Friday. Um, there was potentially, I believe, a proposed sentence agreement on the table that will not last until Monday. I, I can't control what the prosecutor does in the sentence agreement, but um, she's clear that if if the witness is coming, witnesses are coming in on Monday morning then that offer is not going to be available for you to plead to on Monday morning. Likewise, a Cobbs agreement is an agreement if you pled to something, I would agree up front potentially what I would sentence you to. That is also not available to you Monday morning. So um, because we will have called a jury in for your trial. So we're not going to inconvenience the public and the people involved in this case only to have the deal start talking Monday morning. So you just need to know that. But other than that, um, Mr. Bernstein is going to talk to you tomorrow. Things do settle sometimes ahead of time. I have no idea if it will, but otherwise we're ready to go to trial on Monday morning. Can I address okay? the record, please? Before, uh, can I address the record, please? For, for, uh, preserve, to preserve Well, my I mean, you know, everyone seems to want to do this. It's sort of risky business 
to do that. But if you wish to I mean, speak, I'm going to let you do. Go I'm not going to incriminate myself at all. I just wanted to bring to the court's attention that I, I made the courts aware on October 12th that it was a missing piece of evidence that was pictured, but yet not. Um, when I when I brought it to the court's attention, I wanted to do an independent uh, fingerprints analysis on it because I did not you know, that this evidence could possibly impeach the witness because I did not handle this particular piece of evidence. So um, with that being said, I wanted to, you know, again, uh, mind the court, remind the court of the evidence. Of, matter of fact, it's a ceramic ladle um, that was uh, allegedly used by myself in this incident that I, um, you know, without it being there, without, I, I can't, I can't dispute the charges. I can't, you know, I can't say whether I touched it or not because it's not there for me to test. And I just think that it's unfair. That's a violation of my Brady, you know. And uh and well, I mean, I don't well. I don't know what the case is gonna evolve into, Mr. Smith. And so since everyone wants to sort of like armchair quarterback their lawyer, I mean, I don't know what your case is gonna evolve as, but you must, if you're speaking this intelligently about Brady, you must know the difference between direct evidence and circumstantial evidence, allegations versus what's been proven. And so as the case evolves, everything that's everything that's been disclosed is out there right now. Right. Something something is like nobody nobody wins by trick, nobody wins by deceit, which is why the lawyers that regularly practice here know that. And they aren't that kind of lawyer anyway. Well, I'm I mean, just trying so to... I, as I said la to the last defendant, I, I've, I have no doubt about Ms. Blanche's integrity. She is not hiding evidence. She is not secreting evidence. She is not trying to gain one over on you and on the court by, you know, like pulling the ladle out of the hat, if you will, the rabbit out of the hat. I mean, that's not, that's nobody wins that way. Yes. And so the fact of the matter is everybody can say stuff about that, but she's got to make a case. She has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you did what's alleged that you did. And that's her job. Yes. Your lawyer's job is to defend you and to try to get a jury to believe that she has not proven that beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. So that's what's going to happen Monday. Yes, but the truth, but the truth is at hand here. And, uh, you know, and the, 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 but me actually being alleged of touching something that I didn't touch and I'm not able to fingerprint this object, that violates me. You, you understand what I'm trying to come from, Your Honor? You know, I, 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 mean, I requested this on October 12th. I brought it to the court's attention. You know, and so how can I dispute the charges if someone said I did some touch something that I did not have, I, I did not touch? So um, I brought it to you know, the court's attention. And also I want to bring to the court's attention that I did not get notice of my habitual offender enhancement within 21 days of my arrangement. I did not receive a notice of that. And then People versus Cobbler, the Supreme Court vacated the uh, charges due to that. You know, I never got enhancement. You know, I, at the time I did not have Sam. So, you know, I think I had uh, Mr. Feaster, but I did not get uh, any enhancement of my uh, habitual offender. Judge, we found that with the court. I mean, I you know, I can't I, sit here and go through your court file. I never but, got notice I mean, in doing the 21 days. I, I don't know that that's true. I, I I cannot I cannot confirm nor deny that, but I believe that the prosecutor has filed that in a timely fashion. So, you know, you may, I, I don't know, I don't know, I can't really speak to that, but you were uh you had a uh, preliminary examination where the counts were added. I think count three was bound one, two and added count three were bound over. So that all happened, right? Uh, I don't recall that. I thought I was Judge, that, that all happened. That was before my time. However, we did file habitual fentanyl notice. He's actually, actually a super hab, which would make him a 25 year min, but we didn't file that. We filed a re regular habitual fourth. Uh, with the court within 21 days. Um, as far as a ladle, I haven't heard anything from Mr. Bernstein about a ladle. This involves a knife where he stabbed the victim multiple times and then slashed her face and caused her uh, injury, permanent physical injury. So I don't know anything about a ladle. Uh, we do have ni a knife, um, but that that this is the first time. I mean, I heard him say something about a ladle before, but Mr. Bernstein has never made mention of wanting fingerprint analysis or anything done to a ladle. Well, I may mention to that on, on, a, on a course record on October 12th. Derek, Derek, this is, 
These charges are allegedly, you know, these are allegedly charges. That's what, that's what I'm trying to bring to attention, you know, about the alleged uh, 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 slashing or uh, 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 whatever. You know, this is a self-defense case. I'd never touched the ladle. The ladle is a part and plays connection to the actual offense. The ladle is, 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 in, is in connection with the actual offense. I was a Eric, this, this, I don't want to cut you off. It's really not the forum. We shouldn't be arguing with Miss Blanche about this. I mean, I'm, this is why God invented trials. I mean, this is all. But if he, if he needs evidence, Mr. Bernstein, you should file a motion because I haven't heard anything about a ladle. So if this is something he's done and you think is per to the case, then this is a motion that should have been filed already and heard. We're going to trial on Monday. So I'm worried about it because if he thinks we're withholding evidence that I haven't heard anything from his attorney on, that that's a problem. We have trial Monday. Well, it's definitely haven't heard from anything him. about a ladle. So I, I have nothing more to add. Okay. We'll see you Monday. Thank you.